have been around for a long time. I want to say 2004. A long time. Yeah. Let's see if we're gonna have a little button check. Oh, we're starting off right away. Wait, who's dark? Ray is using Dark Samus. Yeah, Ray has a couple of characters up in his arsenal. He uses Falco, Dark Samus. He's been practicing his Zero Suit, but he doesn't have it quite ready just yet, according to what he told me. And yeah, Gallo, he, he did use Zero Suit. I thought, right? Yes, he did. Uh, and Gallo, obviously, using the Captain Falcon. He also has a couple of characters up his sleeve, depending on how the matchup is going to go. Right? Eval is actually known for using his Nez in Smash 4. And using, oh my god, that killed super early. Need to be careful with Ness. Ness also has a very strong combo game, especially when you can spam those DK fires. It's also kill confirm if you don't DI correctly. So you gotta be very, very careful against this team. And Game & Watch, we see so many quality of life buffs that it's another one of those characters that can catch people by surprise this early on in all time. And they need to be careful as well not to lose a stock. We saw earlier while you were explaining that Ray lost his stock, so they have a... Um, Eval and Negi both have a pretty comfortable lead right now. This is also really good against Samus, Dark Samus, which is why I was kind of like a bit surprised too with the choice. Eval can absorb energy shots from Samus. Negi can just absorb them as well or reflect rockets as well. So that's one of the changes in Game Watch. Yeah, that does seem to be like a counter pick for Dark Samus in itself. But we see Negi and Eval sticking with those characters till the end. Maybe whether the adaptability that almost killed with the upbeat, but maybe with the adaptability of the second game, if it doesn't go well, maybe Ray can switch to one of his other characters. Oh my god, what just happened? And I'll double kills. <laughs> we take we we also have them here in Smash. Of course. Well yeah, as you were saying, like Dark Samus didn't not Dark Samus. Hey, but I think from the top with the upbeat from Samus. Yeah. This stage actually has 180 units from the top to die. Compare that with Battlefield, which is 192. This stage actually has one of the lower ones in the current stage list, I would say, and still not dying for that upbeat that Dark Sense has. So, you know, it could be difficult for Ray to get those kills right now. Yeah, and you would think, seeing the layout of this stage, right, the sides being a little bit wider, you would think that they act, the ceiling would actually be a little bit larger than Battlefield, but we actually see it going into the advantage of both Eval and Negi. Two stocks each, while as Ray and Gallo actually have one stock each. Now Gallo has to be careful as well. This doesn't seem to be going well because he lost his previous stock getting gimped earlier. Let's see how Negi can punish, but Ray safely recovers. They were doing they're doing a really good job here, being able to cover each other's options from the ledge. So that if Gallo or Ray miss, the other will be able to cover that and punish, right? But this time around. I actually want to say they're still, still in, that, in that area, except giving up a little bit of safety while we're in that host. Yeah, Gallo's being a lot more defensive, taking care of that stock and punishing <laughs> oh, both Nagi and Eva for getting up close. Let's see how he can maintain the stock going at a 118% off the ledge. Be careful with those shields coming up on the ledge, as if you're up against Captain Falcon or Ganon going. Almost got Gimp, but he safely recovers as well. Let's see how Eva keeps Ray out, making sure that they try to kill Gallo as swiftly as possible and rage of course still a factor in this game so if you're not careful that combat can happen oh, oh the yo-yo the yo-yo is able to cover the ledge really well and it's out of it so it can hit you even before the the two frame window happens right that's a great tool that they gave ness for this game and we see that if Ray can actually do oh that was the air dodge. yeah the air dodge that's, that's another mechanic that we have to really look, um, be careful about the time because if you use a regular air dodge, you have a lot less end lag. So make sure that when you're going to use a dodge and attack, just don't press a, a direction. Otherwise, you might fall in SD like Ray did. And let's see what, right, what adaptability they're going to have for game two. We could see Kados again just because if, like, if he still sticks to Dark Samus. But I might, I might, I think there might be a character switch. They were using Lucina on, I think it was Yalo early mm -hmm. on. That could be, that could be actually very good because these two characters, Ness and Game & Watch, don't have really long disjoints. And Lucina, if it's, if that character is able to stay in the front, can wall out those two characters with fairs or back airs or even forward tilts, which is an amazing move now with those pivot cancels as well. 
can approach with that, and if the opponent jumps, just actually jump as well. Now they, I've known my, Emre and my Gallo all my life. We've been right friends from since our moms had us in our in their bellies, right? Right. So I know that they have a, a style that includes Gallo being a lot of very aggressive, and then Emre keeping a distance in regards to the projectiles. That's why they went Dark Samus and Captain Falcon, right? But in going Lucina, you might also see a switch to Falco by Emre. Yes. And then the dynamic changes. Now Gallo has now Gallo has to be a little bit more spacey friendly, while as Falco being a combo character, Ray is going to be a lot more aggressive. So maybe we let's see how what the changes are going to be in between the, these two characters. If we see Kalos again, I wouldn't be surprised to see the same team pop. But I think that Lucina Falco pick could actually benefit them a lot in this counter pick. Yeah, the major reason why. Um, Gallo didn't pick Captain Falcon with Falco. They, they don't mix really well because they both are expecting a lot of aggressive. If you have somebody that's backing you up slowly, it's a lot better in team. So maybe Gallo and Emre, as I mentioned before, that's why they didn't pick go um, Captain Falcon with Falco and they switched to Dark Samus. Let's see what adaptability they might get. I'm pretty sure Negi and Evil are going to stay with the same picks that they have right now. Yeah, Negi actually using Game Watch in doubles, but using Weak Fit Trainer in singles. So I, I need to talk to him about why he goes for that choice, that difference. But, you know, Tim was still a very strong pick, especially if this team comp stays the way well, We see everyone and Negi picking the same characters as I mentioned before. Seems like they're going back. Ooh, actually going for Captain Falcon and Falcon. Looks like they're going to be a little more, more, bit more aggressive in this one, though. I missed the stage. What? Well, we're gonna find out. A battlefield. A Brinstar battlefield. Oh, I love the fact that we have battlefields that differ from different ones. Oh, I'm so happy. The original. The original one differs from different ones. Differs from different ones. We got this. Either way. I am very tired. <laughs> I mean, you make top 16. <laughs> I don't think you can get, like... Tired is the least of the things you probably... Like, you're probably, like, already sleeping. Man, I was just so close to getting that top 8 money, but you know, for next time, I'll keep grinding hard, okay? But let's see how this is gonna pan out. Nagi's actually trying to control, as same as the game before, make, make, keeping Captain Falcon on the outside, making sure he's not too affected in within the neutral of doubles, right? That was actually pretty... So, Evo was actually using DK Fire and caught Nagi as well. But it might not be a bad option to actually go for that. Because they might be also, okay, I used to take a fire and I missed my opponent, but if Negi's standing on the other side, just bucket it and get some charge. Oh, that fair is amazing. Now. Just drops bombs, and you can just spam them on, on the ledge. You can throw two or three. Oh, and we take those, right? Taking both Gallo stuck and Negi stuck with an up smash. And he, look, and he gets to survive the back throw from Ness, so... That's a pretty even exchange. Let's see if they can capitalize on the advantage that they made. I saw a judge by Neji earlier. That might have been a misinput. Let's see how the pressure continues to apply. Excuse me. Him before that was actually glad. <laughs> Either way. See, this is what I was talking like we were talking about a little bit earlier. How if Gallo and Ray actually establish stage control? They make it very difficult for Negi and Evel to do the same like in the reverse. Soft knees on both characters and Negi? That seems to be another misinput, Lo Kwang. We're seeing a couple of misinputs by Negi in this game. Let's see if he can capitalize on it. And Ray is actually both Ray and Eval are being well, Eval is being a very good tank for his team right now. Playing a lot more defensive. And taking another stack. That's 2-1, 3-1. It's pretty even, but and still, still in surviving that down, down tilt from Falcon. That DI is on point. One of the best DIs in the island. Let's see how Ewald can actually continue to apply that pressure. 184% and applying damage to that Falco. He has to be careful. That Captain Falcon hits hard like a truck, and a back throw is going to do it. You know, there's a lot of characters with kill throws in this game. But a, a little bit of 64 in there. Just a little bit. By the way, Negi again, if he's, I was about to say, if he's able to get that, you know, 
that he can just edge guard really well with that back air, on, especially in Captain Falcon. It's one of those characters that can get gym really easily. And Negi really using that um, dash attack to his advantage as well. That, that has a lot of less lag that people give it credit for. It's not really that easy to punish. Now we're gonna go. Great trying to recover. Uses the yo-yo. Don't get close, dude. dude. I can cover two areas with that, and that's how got. I think it was Gallo, right, who came in trying to help Falco in that situation. And oh, that's enough B. And let's see if they're gonna share the stock. They're gonna share the stock. This is a mini win game. And now, not yet. Gallo and Emery actually take the lead. Go. And Evel, of course, has very short lifespan right now. He needs to extend it as much as he can. But if they're able to get that kill on Gallo, then we have an even situation. We have... Ooh, that's a back throw! The kill... Wow. Commentator's blessing right there from the Quang. I was completely off my game at the start. <laughs> Everything I was talking about, it was kind of serious. <laughs> this time, though, but one of my books. Nice. Emre trying to recover, but he gets punished by the back air by air. While that doesn't kill in this game, thank God. <laughs> Like, oh, back air, killing air. Well, let's see if they can finish Negi stuff. You were like, no. You were like, this killed me so much. I do not want this to be a thing again. <laughs> Negi just dropping bombs. Yeah, like we mentioned it earlier, right? How it's very good to go from the ledge and go from the stairs. Actually, I'm not. It's not a safe thing to do, of course, but it can catch your opponent. That, and, oh my god, but that does kill now, look one. That actually has me really scary. Command throws in this game are actually really, really good. But you have to be careful with all of the options that you have to cover. It was so basically nerf the side B, buff the up B. Up B is now a, a kill move. A bigger kill move than it was in Smash 4, because it did kill in Smash 4, but now it's a lot better. Use. This is 1-1, one, one. I think. Fine. The first of three. And then, of course, we're at XG Christmas Rumble. I believe that's the name of the tournament. That is correct. I, I always for forgot that last. I know it's XG Christmas, but Rumble kind of escaped me from there. Either way, Dragon Ball Fighters and Smash Ultimate doubles and singles. I do believe... I don't know if Fighters is streaming or recording, so... If they're streaming, be sure to, to tune in into that as well. If not, probably recording, so you're going to be able to catch it on the channel as well. Same thing with Ultimate. Follow them on the XG, I think it's XG Gaming PR. No, XG. Sent you Gaming Sent you Official gaming on Twitch.tv. Right. And then on YouTube as well, you'll be able to catch all the VODs for today's tournament. Yeah. And thank you for the guys that are really doing everything that they can to make sure that this, this tournament runs as smoothly as possible. All the coordinates from XG. And I have here the startup community, which is Engine 4. Right now, we are in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Engine 4. It's a pretty cool place. XG has had a couple of tournaments here already. They have a lot of space and uh, a lot of multi-plugs for the different setups. So it's been quite alright so far. Yep, and of course they, I believe they also have a tournament on the 13th at Warriors Hall that they've been kind of uh, advertising a little bit earlier on. So make sure to sh get more information on that because I believe, I don't know if that's already up on the calendar. It should be up on the calendar in our Smash Dojo PR Facebook, so make sure you search right there and log in and join our group so you can find out the latest information in regards to tournaments, Puerto Rico. Make sure you have some fun as well. We're here playing friendlies, playing in tournaments, trying to get some money, you know, just making sure that we keep up the grind. Yeah, and of course, uh, you don't need to compete in tournaments. You can just come in and play friendlies, as you were saying. And ask, always ask for advice, especially if you're trying to get into the community. You know, it could do a lot of help. Always. We have a lot of top players that have a lot of knowledge. Ewile and Negi being two players that, as you mentioned before, almost as since 2004, they've been playing Smash Bros, right? But now we're going into game three. Everybody stays with the same characters, but going back to Kalos. An interesting pick, of course. Gallo and Falco are able to cover a lot of distance, being in the speed that you have. But either way, this is a very big area, so I don't know why this is Actually, Gallo actually parrying the bullet from, from <laughs> Falco's back throw. You know, it's just one of those things I can do. And that's, that's one of the mechanics that I really want to see buffed in this, in this game. I feel like parrying 
has a lot of risk and not that much of a reward. But that reward almost for Eval is went for almost landing that kill with a back throw. Back throw, my apologies. Try to edge guard him. Not quite gonna get it. Let's see the pressure that Nelly and Eval are actually gonna try to do now. Man, I don't think you have a jump. That's it. I'm gonna get games. That was a beautiful mo movement by Negi, making sure that he was just right landing that back there as well. They have a lot of really good. Oh, dead spike. They have a lot of good awareness here because they've been sent off stage, like say Ray and Evo both at the same time. And then quickly, the person that has less percent has been able to buffer an attack, trying to get their opponent. I don't think it's landed quite just yet, but that's very important to do if you're, you know, playing doubles. Carrying the last hit of the down air, but everyone's going to continue to combo. And look at that coverage by Negi, just throwing those little clouds up in the air. So, so much good movement by these two players. That's one of the, I think, one of the very good changes they made for a game around. Kind of works a little bit like Mega Man's up here. But, you know, it's, I, I would say it's a little bit better Because it does, I think it does more damage, but I, I gotta check. I think it's gonna depend on the coverage of the player in itself. Because the, the air dodging has been severely changed. Not nerfed, sorry. Changed in general. And it's a lot easier to actually land those uppers, making sure they apply the pressure on, on the air, right? Because there's an advantage state in this game is actually pretty difficult to get out of. And those like Game Awards, which And are another back air right there. Negi is being a monster right now, but fortunately he has these in that stock. Still a monster because you have Priest. That was almost dead. And that could be a two-stock advantage here from Red Team. Let's see if Ray and Gallo can actually try to take that. Ooh, that almost killed, but not quite there. Gallo recovering. Eval is covering, but not working. I rhymed three times and I did not notice. Rhyming is cool. cool. By the way, multi jab. Multi jabs, like if you shield, uh, I want to talk about it. If you shield multi jabs, mm -hmm. make sure you parry the last hit. Because if you have a very fast jab as well, parrying, I think it's just a three frame advantage you have. So pretty much, I think very little characters can actually go and buffer an attack and actually run from that. Yes. Non-existent advantage almost, but we know players are always going to take full advantage of what just happened. Don't know what happened, but what I do know is that it's a, a, almost a tight game, but Ray has a lot of percentage right now. Those back airs are keep just piling. Oh my oh. god, he almost gimped him, not quite going to do it. Everybody is applying the pressure on stage while Negi is covering the outside. Let's see how the pressure continues. Ray is going to try to get the down air. Falco is sick in this game as well, Loquan. Looking like melee Falco for a second right there with that down air. Let's see how they can apply the pressure. Gallo being in the front. Falco is actually going to be a little bit on the outside. And uh, Negi, Negi's going to have a tough time. Uh, not Negi. Ewan. Ewan is going to have a tough time here. He can do it, though. We were talking about how, how experienced this player is. And if he's able to get that stock on Ray, it could be very difficult for, for Gallo, actually. The, the position that they have right now is the one that they try to cover as many options as they can. They keep the captain Falcon in the front. Smash. And that's the game. But it's 2 1. Dash dance pulling through, right? Kind of a little, a little bit of a mix up there. What is it? Is Gallo going to do? And then, you know, just throwing that forward smash as soon as he saw that air dodge. And Gallo used to use a lot of extended dash dancing in Smash 4. Oh, yeah. So he's already used to the movement in general and the feel of the game. While Captain Falcon ha doesn't have one of the best dash dances in the game, the fact that he's one of the fastest characters as well, it actually serves for different mix-ups. And Gallo is actually one of those characters that really... Characters, one of those players that really gets in under your skin and just... Wow opens your mind and he, he thinks like he just keeps predicting wherever you're gonna go but he's just a, he's just a patient player overall and Eval and Negi are also patient players so let's see what's gonna happen right now going into D4 and again Carlos now there's something about the stage that they like a lot I mean, honestly I think I'm talking about how still don't really know what they're going for maybe the walls let's maybe the wall jump and have to recover so both Captain Falcon and Falco have wall jumps. Right. 
I don't know if um, Game & Watch and Nez have wall jumps though. So, uh, maybe it's the platform layout. They do have really good recoveries either way. Like, Nez, you can give them. But if he's able to get that PKE under 2, I think it's called the up the second hit. You need to be careful because that it has insane knockback. Back throw! Not gonna kill just yet. You know, kinda hard time for Nez being dethroned as having the best kill move in the game. That's one. That's one right there. Card is able to connect. Fun fact, Incineroar's back throw now is the best back throw in the game. Oh yeah. Got, got dethroned. But I was still proving that it's still efficient, so that doesn't really matter right now. And that the changes that they made to the upper by Nez are actually I find him oh my goodness. That back air connecting. But the changes to the up air, as I was mentioning before, is one of my favorite changes that they received from Ness, because a lot of the now he uses the multi-hit to accommodate the character when he lands and people start panicking and start air dodging. And when you know you get grabbed again and you get comboed. So it's one of the changes that I really like from Ness coming into open. Yeah, and of course you have that side magnet as well, the change is kind of like a single side. Mm -hmm. And you can actually do pretty good combos with Ness. We haven't been seeing that. Oh, okay, that was really good by Negi. That directional air dodge could have felt death forever. But Negi quickly realizing that situation, going for the upbeat to save, to knock Evo out of that lag, right? And Gallo using his upbeat to take the stock. So now we are almost even. Negi being the tank of the team. Which is kind of surprising considering he's a paper. <laughs> is he paper though? He's two dimensional. That much we can say. Two dimensional and he just lost his stock. So let's see how they can capitalize. Eval and Nagy currently have a lead in, in regards to percentage. So Ray and Gallo have to be careful. And they are kind of back, coming back to buy Gallo and Blue Team, right? There. Whoa! The coverage by that Nair! Going into the side B, that Eval is playing really well as well. The, both, all of these players are really oh, no. playing really okay. well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the ball jump that we were talking about. Can, oh my god, covering the options, they were all over Gallo and he just he didn't have anywhere to go. Okay, up B again. The up B has been able to catch them a lot right now. But either way, two stock advantage, this is going to be very good for the blue team. Oh, the spike bringing him down to earth. A one stock lead by both Negi and Eva trying to force a game five. Let's see if, if Gallo and Emery can close it out. Okay, there, yeah. They, they were looking for one of these team combos in the first, But a little bit too high up for them, right? To actually try to go for a ball, up, especially with the pressure of the other opponent that was in the first. Going for everything, Gray's playing a lot more safely now, considering he has such high percentage. He has to be careful though, and cover- Oh! That comboed! That was a really good option by Falco. I don't know if that was true though, but it looked really good. Yeah, and of course, it might kind of have baited Eggy, because in the sense that Falco has the high jump in the game. But that if you're not chair shot! It, destroying Gray. Gallo at 84%. Let's see if he can bring it back. It's still doable. He needs to take care of Eval first. That's oh. These team combos though have been missing. Back throw, that should be it. No! Wow! That's a that's good DI, but that was a heavy that's a heavy Captain Falcon right there. See, see, this is what you need to be doing in teams. You need to be covering your teammates' options, the one they're not going for. But the yo-yo! There were a lot of opportunities for Red Team to kill, but they both were going for the same option, so Gallo was able to just go for the for, for jump in that situation and evade that, that completely. Yeah, the yo-yo actually covering that recovery from Captain Falcon. Going into game 5, this is actually a pretty good set by top level players here in Puerto Rico. Pretty much what you would expect at this point, right? If you're Evan and Nick. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if you go to a large stage as well. Because these two characters are able to cover a lot of ground, like Falcon and Hector Falcon. So if you give him a lot... Actually, no. You want a small stage. If you're able to get pressure on them, they're not going to be able to come back. They have a lot of shorter distance. 
Maybe that's why they picked Kalos, because Kalos is really a wide Yeah, that makes range. more sense. <laughs> Smash Bro. Going to Smash Bro. Actually going to Town and City. Okay. Well, there's a lot less room. And the platforms okay, actually to move. Kalos, yeah. yeah. And you were saying how the platforms actually move here, even with hazards off. So maybe they have... In regards to them moving, maybe they have other opportunities to recover as well. Because we know that Ewa's and Negi's recoveries versus the Nets and Game and Watch are actually pretty good. The only one that's a little bit iffy would be Nancy, because we don't know how PK Thunder can react when pressure situation. Talk about it. Game Watch can actually go off stage and bump it Thunder before it hits it. Uh, wait, no, never mind. They're in the same team. What am I saying? Exactly. I mean, that can happen if they make a mistake, but hopefully they won't make that mistake in Game 5. Losers Finals here in SG Christmas Rumble! I am also tired, clearly. <laughs> it's okay, man. It happens to the best of us. See, Evan maintaining the distance out of Gallo really does not like to be outside with Captain Falcon. And again, no Captain Falcon likes to be on the outside, right? I was about to say, drop down from the platform and you know what's good for you. <laughs> that could be good. Eval is all over Gallo, so they have a clear strategy, right? Woo! Okay. Supply and racking damage. Eval is a lot. It's gonna be a lot easier for Eval to edge guard. He's keeping at a distance. Oh, Eval! Oh! So he's trying to go for that bomb on the stage to be able to use a second up B, but. It was too close for that LP when it came out and climbed to the stage and nowhere they were going. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. But luckily, they still have a lead in this game. Negi having all three stacks. Negi really has been the tank of this team. Taking as much damage as possible and making sure he doesn't die so early in the game. I liked how the Nair from Demon Watch was able to help Ness. Emma just saw. Peggy falling down and just shielded to make sure he was in. Okay! Back throw is not gonna quite do it. Almost gonna spike, but Eva covers the option with the Nair. Nair being so good for the for Ness. And now taking all those characters on the outside. A couple of different movements from Gallo and Ray, and that's a back throw by Eva. He's just gonna keep looking for that grab when he's on the ledge, Laquan. If it ain't broke, don't fix it! I need to be aware. And look at all that damage! He threw four PK fires in a row. Man. Ah, oh, you need to be aware of that PK power and just DI out. Try to get away from it as much as possible. But Maggie was on the other side, making it that very difficult. Now that's a kill by Ray as well. So they really need to be careful and make sure that they use the, the movement to their advantage in this game. That was a good save by Ray. And a kill to boot, but and now we're even. I don't know what happened there. Everything happened. Okay. See, Ray didn't cover the option, but if it were me, oh my god, that's a back throw. Not quite gonna kill just yet, but if you saw PK Thunder going outside from Ewan, I would have gone down, used the reflector. That's a good idea. But. He had high percent, he had one stock, so he didn't want to risk it, so I understand not going for that option. Yeah, it might it might be, you know, Gala and Ray are really good for Oh, it. dash attack, not! I gotta do it just yet. <laughs> Gentlemen's jab taking Negi from the outside. Gallo recovers from the ledge. Let's see if they can apply enough pressure. Oh my god, that was an up air by Ness. Let's see how they Oh the yo-yo covering the option. That's the game. Covering the ledge from from the top of the stage, and then Negi from the bottom also, with that up B. Just in case if one missed that situation, or the two frame, the other would be trying to also get that. Beautiful coverage by both players. Now we get to see Grand Finals of Doubles. Pretty sure it's gonna be Ewal and Negi versus Inking and Seon. That's a team that's been winning since, I believe, the start of Smash 4? So you gotta be very careful against these two players, Yoshi, and I believe Pac-Man now nowadays. Yeah. Now before we get into it, let's give you an update of the singles bracket. I have an update right here. We have here um, Theon besting Craven 2-1 to go advance into winners finals, and then we have Ekin beating XL0 2-1 to advance into winners finals. So we have 
as I like to call it, La Vieja Confiable, Old Reliable, <laughs> in Winners Finals. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? After Lee Percent beat me. By the way, if you don't, if you're in the Smash VR community and you don't know Lee Percent, he's a brawl player. He didn't really play Smash 4, I think I only saw him once. Well, he did play a couple of times at the beginning of Smash 4. I believe he was using Villager at the beginning of the game. But now, since his trusty Rob got that down throw Barry, he's been using it in, in the game and he's been really tearing ter it up. Fortunately, he actually lost to Moncho 2-0. A villager. Yep. And then Moncho went ahead. And oh! Another upset right there. Moncho beating XL 0-2-1. That Advanced means he's into loser semis. semis. Yeah. So he'll be, he'll be fighting for fourth place. Moncho doing really well here in Ultimate. Solid work after moving into to New York, if I'm not mistaken. Actually living there. That's right. Yeah, he's been getting into that cash grind. Oh, over there in the States, and you know what happens when, you know, us Puerto Ricans, we go there, we practice a little bit, and when we come back, we're a whole different beast. You can ask Mini. Oh, yeah, Mini is another really good example. Either way, 